quite a bit earlier this time. Very bumpy track, so perhaps it plays. Perhaps it plays. Perhaps it plays into the car's ability on. Oh, Jesus, shut up. <laughs> fascinating comparison for me. So you're about to see what the extra 20 horsepower is worth in terms of lap time. We're flat out in fourth here. We just get up into fifth before breaking into Quarry Here at Avon Rise you can see the GT430 has pulled a car length in a bit. Now this is pure horsepower. Bearing in mind the GT430 carries quite a lot more drag along with the extra downforce. Now the line could have been better in the Sport 410, but you can see already that the 430 has made a considerable gain on corner entry. So by the first chicane, you can see the gap with two or three car lengths ahead in the GT430. Now this corner here, old paddock bend, the GT430 was absolutely flat in third. Whereas the Sport 410, like most other cars I've driven, needed a lift. The result, as you can see, is an ever widening gap as they approach the challenging tower corner. Now, just watch the oversteer there in the Sport 410. That's something you won't see in the GT430. You might also notice that the GT430, the lower screen, does require more steering lock in some corners. Now this is one of the key differences between these two cars. The Sport 410 is actually set up to be a little more pointy and a little more oversteery. So as we complete the lap you can see that the gap between them is worth quite a lot more than the 20 horsepower difference. Now bear in mind that these cars are both on Michelin's Pilot Sport Cup 2s. The GT430 is a bit wider. That alone, I don't think, can account for difference. I think it's a combination of the power, extra grip, better brakes and better aero, and you can see how all those come together over a lap. You might also see how the GT430 in the lower screen requires more steering lock than the Sport 410 through some of the corners, in particular quarry. So I think Due in part to the larger rear tyres, there is more understeer through certain corners. Now this can be driven round to some extent, but I think it's clear that it's not slowing the car down. It's part of what makes the GT430 so friendly and confidence inspiring at the limit. Somewhere like Castle Coombe with not much runoff, this really is worth quite a lot of lap time in itself. Not only is it faster than the Sport 410, it's also more forgiving too. Have another look back at the video and you'll see that my hands move less, even though I'm travelling faster, my hands are moving less at the wheel of the GT430. I think that's a real sign of the composure of the car and Castle Coombe is a real challenge in that regard. It's exceptionally bumpy and there are a lot of bumps in awkward places and the GT430 took them all in its stride. Now of course both cars could have gone quite a bit quicker than this, these are not ultimate lap times by any stretch of the imagination, but 
the factory puts the GT430 at 2.6 seconds faster than the Sport 410 around Hethel. Since having spent a day at Castle Coombe in the GT430, that's one claim that seems entirely believable.